Greetings from Arizona. This is Tony Kuiper. In this video I'm going to review the Make It Glow action in the TK7 panel. Make It Glow is like a subtle Orton effect in that it blurs and enhances the colors present in the image. But unlike the Orton effect it does not blur the underlying texture. So you get all the pop of the improved color saturation without losing any structure or detail. Autumn leaves images are a great place to experiment with Make It Glow since there is often a sense of glow already present in the warm colors. Make It Glow enhances this. The Make It Glow action is found in the TK menu in the color section. Clicking it brings up the Gaussian Blur dialog window. The default pixel radius is the megapixel count of the image and this is generally a good value to use but you can of course experiment with different numbers if you'd like. Clicking OK finishes the action. This image is a very straightforward use of the Make It Glow effect. The extra color really adds some life to this image and the detail throughout the image has been retained. This image is also a good place to point out the difference between Make It Glow and the Vibrance Adjustment which can also increase saturation and create a glow-like effect. I'll turn off the Make It Glow layer and create a Vibrance Adjustment layer. Then I'll adjust the Vibrance slider to get a similar red in the leaves, probably around plus 70. But as I do this, you'll see that the blues in the background get too saturated. That's because the Vibrance Adjustment affects cool colors more than warm colors, and this is the opposite of the desired effect when adding glow. For glow, warm colors, reds, yellows, and oranges, often look better with added saturation than cool blue colors. I'll go back and forth turning the two layers on and off a couple of times so you can see the excess blue in the vibrance adjustment. The Make It Glow action treats all colors equally and generally produces a more balanced effect when compared with a vibrance adjustment. Slot Canyon images are another place to experiment with Make It Glow given the warm colors often present. Again, I'll just run the action accepting the default pixel radius. Now in this case, the effect feels a little strong. Parts of the image are getting oversaturated. One way to deal with this is to conceal the effect in the more saturated pixels using a layer mask. The saturation and vibrance masks in the Rapid Mask module makes this easy. First, make a Vibrance Rapid Mask, which selects the least saturated colors in the image most. Usually you'll want to try one of the more restrictive masks, since the Vibrance 1 mask tends to be quite broad for regular photographs. A mask with at least some dark gray is often ideal, like a Vibrance 2, or even a Vibrance 3. In this case, I found that a Vibrance 1 mask along with a mid-tones modification of Gamma 0.75 worked best. This would be equivalent to a Vibrance mask somewhere between Vibrance 1 and Vibrance 2. Now, just use the Apply button to apply this mask as a layer mask on the Make It Glow layer. With this mask, the Make It Glow effect is now more uniform across the image. And as I turn the layer's visibility on and off, hopefully you can see that the color has been improved. And if I disable and re-enable the mask, you can see how this vibrance mask properly balances the effect between the more saturated and less saturated colors in the image. Okay, let's do another one. Rocks again. Like in the first two images, I'm going to add Make It Glow almost immediately after bringing the image into Photoshop from the RAW converter. This is a good place to try it. It can help you see what might be possible with the image's colors and help set the tone for future development. Because the effect is subtle, especially on low saturation images like this one, it's okay to run it a second time to make it stronger. And in this case, I found I could even go a third time. Although with this last pass, some of the colors, 
like these oranges are definitely looking a little oversaturated. But again, I can use a vibrance mask to control this. Again, I want a vibrance mask that is starting to show some dark gray or black in those orange colors. Vibrance 2 is probably not enough. Vibrance 3 is looking better. So is Vibrance 4, but it's maybe looking a bit too dark overall, as I'd still like to get a little saturation boost from this layer in all the colors. So I'll go with Vibrance 3 and apply it as a layer mask to the final Make It Glow layer. This third run with the mask is much more subtle than the first two and may be hard to see in the video, but it's a definite improvement on my monitor. By turning all the Make It Glow layers off and on, it's easy to see what a nice and somewhat surprising effect the repeated application had on this image. So don't be afraid to run the action more than once. On some images, multiple runs are what's needed to get the best effect. One place you need to be careful using Make It Glow is with clear sky and clouds. A clear blue sky will often look too saturated if you try to glow it. So that's one situation I tend to avoid. Clouds, however, like in this image, often work, but you still need to use some judgment. I'll run the action here and you can see what happens. Since the clouds are much lower in color saturation than the blue in a clear sky, the extra blue in the clouds after running the action works pretty well especially with the added saturation in the warm colors. If I want to mask out the excess blue, I can again use a targeted mask. In this case, go to the Color Source menu, click the blue cyan item to make a Cool Zone mask, click the A button to apply an Auto Levels adjustment, then invert it in order to conceal the cool colors, which need to be darker gray in the mask, and to reveal the warm colors, which need to be white in the mask. And now apply this mask as a layer mask to the Make It Glow layer. This way I get the full effect in the warm colors of the rocks and a smaller effect in the cool colors in the clouds. I'll disable and enable the layer mask and you might be able to see how this mask is nicely preventing excess blue in the clouds. Okay, one last image and in this one I've already finished my processing. However, when I printed this it looked a little dull so I ran the Make It Glow action to see if it would help. Not surprisingly, I like the result, though some of the foreground yellows look a little oversaturated to me. Again, I can use a targeted mask to correct this. In this case, I'll use a saturation mask and mask painting. First, I'll make a saturation mask using the sat item under the sat source menu. This easily finds the oversaturated yellows in the foreground, which are whiter in this mask. I'll then load this mask as a selection. The panel automatically hides the marching ants, but the selection indicator tells me the selection is active. Then clicking this button adds a white reveal all mask to the layer and makes a black paintbrush the active tool. Set brush opacity to around 50% and then just paint over the foreground a couple of times to conceal the excess saturation from the selected pixels. Finally, turn off the selection. Viewing the mask, you can see how the black paint is concealing the Make It Glow effect in just the most saturated yellow parts of the image where I painted and this results in the glow effect being more balanced across the image and the added glow is a definite improvement here. In conclusion, Make It Glow is a really nice effect to try and it works on many different types of images. It does a great job of enhancing color while preserving the underlying detail. 
It can be used at the start of Photoshop processing to help set the tone for the workflow. It can be used at the end to add a little extra color punch to a finished image or anywhere along the way. And it can be used multiple times if that's what helps the image. Finally, to fine tune the effect, the saturation, vibrance, and color masks in the TK7 Rapid Mask module can be used for precision control to make sure the glow is properly balanced across the image. The bottom line is that I really like this effect on my landscape photos. I use it frequently and would encourage you to give it a try. I think you'll be surprised at how good an image looks once you make it glow. This is Tony Kuiper. Best wishes for good light.